photographic days go back to 1957 and my first camera was an Alpha Select, something very similar to this one, which you could argue today that it teaches you real photography because you had to set the settings manually, apertures and shutter speeds. Of course, that is all done automatically these days, computerized, but for somebody like myself, whose photography goes back to 1957, remember, weaning yourself off traditional methods is rather difficult. And also I find that some of those traditional, old if you like, old fashioned methods are more creative. Spot metering was one, but of course today we have HDR. In my earlier film days, I shot colour transparencies uh, for projection, and you had to get the exposure right. Of course, today, digital cameras are far more sophisticated in what they can do, but not only that, we now have software where we can make changes, adjustments, alterations after the photograph has been taken. I embrace most changes, but there are some traditional techniques which I still consider better today, and spot metering is one. I often mention this in my programs, and I have received many requests from you to explain the technique in a little more detail. So here goes. More by habit, I spot meter my pictures most of time, even when Matrix or ESP would be perfectly okay. But in my work, the classic case where spot metering is absolutely essential is where you have a dark church interior and at the far end is a much brighter window. Now, HDR in camera will bring those extremes of exposure together. But there is another way where you combine camera technology with what you do with, on a computer afterwards. In other words, combining the old with the new and getting the best out of both. With a computer and software close to hand, this is the way we did things with a digital camera before HDR came along. Now, it will require a bit of practice, but it has the added advantage. If things don't work out, then can usually you can undo things or even change your mind six months later. And I'm very good at that, by the way. First, of course, set the metering to spot and also save to the raw file format not JPEG you can do that right at the end of the operation now when the metering is set to spot I use the center part of the screen but this should work just as well at other areas of the screen the point is that you've got to lock the exposure now, you might have the AEL button, for example, but let me show you with Olympus cameras, if you have it set up correctly, that when you half the press the shutter button, not take a picture as I did then, did you hear the bleep? Right? Now, provided I keep my finger on the button, then the exposure is locked, and therefore, if through spot metering, that is not the right composition. I can then move the camera to the correct composition and, okay, I'll take a picture of you. Okay, I've got it on the camera, right, let's take the picture. And so therefore I have spot metered over there and take a picture of you there. That is the technique of spot metering. I will use a church interior as my example as to where I spot 
meter from, and every picture incidentally is different. This does take a bit of practice. There are facilities within camera to help you, such as the histogram, but with the advent of the electronic finder and live view, then I can use the best facility for judging the correct exposure, and that is my eyes. And by the way, when you see the picture, let me warn you, it will look absolutely horrid. Broadly speaking, and as I said a moment ago, every picture is different, and the task, the expertise, certainly with me, is based on experience, which of course I cannot teach, but you meet up close to the window so that the window is slightly overexposed, but not as much as the amount of underexposure in the dark church. Copy the original raw file out of camera onto your computer. Now, I use Adobe Lightroom, but whatever you use, and I can do this with Lightroom, that when it comes to saving the image, you do not overwrite the original raw file. What Lightroom can do is to save any changes onto a separate carriage file, which you can add to or delete, or indeed delete completely and start all over again. If you overwrite the original file, then I think the whole point of this process is somewhat lost. In Lightroom, I then play around with the controls, including exposure, white balance, whites, highlights, uh, let me see, blacks, and until, until the picture looks right. And with some of the things I do, you'll probably have you tearing your hair out. But this, as I say, is the creative element of the whole process. Every picture is different, and you do it until it looks right. And don't forget, because you're dealing with the original raw file, and provided you're not overwriting it, then any errors can be undone. You go and start all over again, or indeed, as I said earlier, change your mind six months later. It is totally flexible. When you've finished and decided, at least for the moment, this is it, then you make a JPEG copy for whatever the job in hand happens to be. But I archive, perhaps with the carriage file, the raw file. I keep the raw files in my library, not the JPEGs. One problem about lightening dark areas, which we must be aware of, is the possibility of increasing noise. But cameras these days, and indeed software, seem to be much better in taming or suppressing this. And indeed, I do consider that a little bit of noise is far preferable to a blown-out highlight that you cannot correct simply because you overexpose the darn thing. I'm now going to repeat the process with a landscape. But remember, every picture, even different landscapes, the process of where you spot meter from is different and is something that is only gained by practice and experience. However, with landscapes, I mostly spot meter from the horizon, that is where the land meets the sky. Now, if that is not the focusing point that you desire, the answer is quite simple. You detach the autofocus and you manually focus first and then you spot meter. When I go back and recall all those years ago, the way I was taught photography, where you had to understand apertures and shutter speeds. And of course, computerized cameras, and it's been doing this for some time, hasn't it, does this all for you. 
do we really understand what is happening? Do we understand the basics of photography? As I used to say when I ran photographic holidays, I'm too old for that now incidentally, but when I ran photographic uh, holidays, I told my students that computerization in cameras was only an aid and not an answer. And when we com combine the old with the new, I think it's far more creative than just relying on the computerization of the camera by just simply pressing a few buttons. But there you are, that's the way I do think you ask me to explain this. And at the end of the day, of course, the choice is yours. But I wish you luck.